thank you good morning uh, so uh, today we are going to learn about rollover stability analysis of a vehicle uh, particularly the vehicle uh, um, whose uh, or the those vehicle those vehicle cg location uh, is uh, uh, placed at an elevated position like truck trailers all if you look at the cg location is higher than that of the cg location of a passenger car from the ground level so if you look at they those vehicles are uh, very much uh, uh, easily able to uh, go out of its uh, stable state even at a uh, lower speeds during cornering or during lateral load transfer that takes place so today's class we are going to look at uh, uh, roll over stability of vehicle that's a topic so what is that uh, objective of this topic what is that you want to do in this topic so you would understand the free body diagram of a vehicle uh, schematically and uh, you would see what would be the condition for wedge of uh, the roll over uh, of the vehicle uh, would take place and what are the values of uh, lateral acceleration at that uh, instant called a threshold value or critical value of lateral acceleration so the vehicle uh, cannot afford to have that acceleration and uh, that would be the first requisite for your uh, vehicle to be prevented from rolling over uh, during the cornering and you also see that uh, the role of the vehicle is uh, uh, roll over stability uh, she would come because of what because of primarily uh, there are two uh, masses that we have been looking at is unspent and spent mass so their rotation uh, is what is going to cause their rolling action is what is going to Uh, precipitate you know uh, this uh, roll over issue in your vehicle and that is essentially is because of lateral load transfer that's happening so we are going to uh, understand that uh, physics and uh, we will look at what is the thumb rule uh, an industrial practice that we look at is if the lateral acceleration value goes beyond t by 2 h uh, then uh, the vehicle will uh, undergo roll over what is t by 2 h what is t there is uh, the track of the vehicle so if you look at from the rear or from the front the track is uh, from right side to left side wheel to uh, tire wheel assembly uh, center to center distance is what is called a track so that divided by two times h what, what small h is what is the cg location from the ground so if your lateral acceleration goes beyond this value uh, uh, is what is uh, through industrial reference considered to be Uh, uh not preferred our threshold value of lateral acceleration uh, the should not be exceeded uh, by the vehicle to prevent this roll over uh, problem of your vehicle but it is not so but in engineering study you have to go more in detail of accounting um, the design of your suspension to prevent your roll over um, problem of your vehicle so when i say design of your suspension what would be the stiffness uh, that are offered by the springs in the suspension because those spring suspension is essentially going to give you um, an overall uh, stiffness of your vehicle sprung mass uh, that is called roll roll stiffness of your vehicle so the roll stiffness uh, uh, value uh, is very important in order to achieve um, uh, a good design uh, that can prevent roll over issue and that can uh, shift the uh, threshold value of lateral acceleration slightly above or uh, the thumb rule t by 2 h is what is maximum possible and uh, in reality if your design of your suspension spring is not uh, uh, accounted properly even before you reach to this t by 2 h you would see the roll over problem of your vehicle so this is all something that you would understand at the end of the lecture as we go through uh, uh, the forces acting on a vehicle during cornering uh, in a vehicle and uh, what does this roll over uh, physics so that is essentially is what i'm going to teach you in this today's class uh, let me just share my screen uh, hope it is visible to you all right in the last class we essentially looked at uh, uh, stability analysis uh, of a vehicle in yaw plane model we have learned an important criterion called rao stability criterion which is very much applicable for linear time invariant uh, control um, model of your vehicle so um, there we uh, understood the advantage of that method is that you do not required really to factorize this characteristic equation uh, that describes your yaw plane vehicle model and uh, you can just look at uh, the rao's array uh, and the array has been developed by means of this procedure what you have learned in the last class 
and you have to look at the first column of your array and then if all the elements in the first column happens to be of same sign there is no sign change that ensures that uh, you know the um, roots of this polynomial are called the closed loop poles should lie on the left half plane ensured if there are sign changes uh, exist how many number of times the sign changes that many number of rules roots in the, that poles are, are lying on the uh, right half plane with uh, with the positive real part so if that is so uh, then uh, on the absolute stability or the stability of the system cannot be uh, ensured in such cases the rao stability criterion would give you the conditions to arrive at looking at this column to prevent the sign change and that would impose the condition of the vehicle parameters to be accounted uh, in order to ensure uh, the yaw stability of the vehicle so that's what is uh, you have learned in the last class and with an example problem uh, we looked at uh, um, even though on uh, the coefficients of this characteristic polynomial all positive uh, we say that uh, it is necessary but we cannot conclude from there and we have to go ahead with this uh, completing rawls array and that we could see there are two uh, times the sign changes that represent the two poles uh, are uh, with the positive real parts on the right half plane so if you solve for this roots of this equation you would see that uh, you would have uh, two roots with the real part on the right half plane and that says that the system is not uh, stable uh, this is just to mathematically to understand this uh, procedure but uh, however if you have the coefficients involving parameters of the system in our case the vehicle parameter of the bicycle model and that is essentially uh, dictated you what is called a critical um, velocity we obtain from uh, stability factor uh, stability factor so such kind of conditions can be straight away obtained even without solving the roots of this uh, equation so that's what is an advantage of rao stability criterion that we have learned in the last class and that is uh, essentially for yaw plane stability where uh, the steering control of a vehicle would be lost at the critical speed and uh, no more the driver would be able to exercise the steering and the vehicle would uh, spin about either axis right that's what is that unstable state uh, we have learned and today's class we are going to learn uh, another uh, stable stability issue of the vehicle called rollover stability so let me just take uh, today's class and uh, the slide and this is lecture number forty five and today's date 17/11/2021 today's topic is roll over stability analysis so the objective of roll over stability analysis as i said it is to find out the value of uh, the stiffness of your suspension in order to get the required roll stiffness that would prevent roll over problem of your vehicle right so that's what you are going to uh, understand so let me represent schematically a vehicle uh, which you have looked at earlier also uh, to understand the role of uh, suspension in vehicle roll so i'm just taking the same free body diagram and here is where my axle of vehicle the axle of vehicle And you have your uh, CG location now somewhere here, and uh, this is your ground level ground, and the weight of your vehicle is now acting at the CG W, and that has been balanced by the normals at the contact. So this model replicate that uh, considering. um the plane through the cg location of your vehicle uh, when you view from uh, rear 
or from front you can consider when you view from in this case let's consider when you view from uh, rear uh, you see that uh, the right and left hand side uh, wheels are considered together two axles are considered together like that we consider this model so here it is right side so let's call this is f is at r and this is f is at l left hand side normal so they are equal and that balances the weight if this vehicle go in a straight path with the constant speed static equilibrium so the there is no problem of rollover and so on <clears throat> so the rollover comes when there is a disturbance uh, from the side on this body so the body can roll about the roll axis so this point is what is the roll axis now so this is what is representing the roll axis and let's define now this roll axis distance from the ground as h1 and uh, from this roll axis to your cg location of the vehicle is at a distance h2 and this height of cg from the ground is small h so small h is h1 plus h2 so this is the geometry and uh, this distance from here to here is what is called a track small t and if i project uh, my vertical this is symmetry now about vertical plane and about this axis now hence and this is your uh, pass point and this is your uh, point o projected uh, on the ground so about this vertical you have this is symmetry now so this is your free body diagram when the vehicle travel in straight path with constant speed right so suddenly if i have to take a, a right turn so i am looking at this vehicle from rear and i have to take a right turn and what would happen there will be a load transfer from right side to left side and that load transfer would make the tire to get deflected so the deflection on this side would be more than that of this side so at the moment what is my tire deflection because of this load the tire get deflected and that tire deflection let me call it as delta r let me call that as uh, delta small r so and also define my tire stiffness radial tire stiffness as cr c subscript r radial tire stiffness so delta r is deflection and cr is tire radial stiffness right there are the different stiffness of the tire we have already looked at cornering stiffness that is for lateral force to develop and that's function of slip angle and so on that we have seen and uh, now uh, this radial stiffness is that you have a tire you load the tire you see the tire uh, contact patch is created uh, if you do not load it's a line contact when you load that line contact spread and it become a rectangular patch so at that time what is the deflection reduction uh, radius of the tire is what is delta r and then that, uh, that's associated stiffness because you can make your tire wheel assembly as is the spring and damper model the spring uh, deflection is what is delta r and cr is what is the tire radial stiffness or tire vertical stiffness that you can say here so if this is so i can say now f is at l is nothing but uh, delta r left is equal to into cr the product right similarly on this side so i can say this is nothing but delta r so delta small r delta small r into cr so this delta small r I, i put right side delta small r and here uh, this is going to be delta small r left side into cr but uh, this delta r at this condition at this condition when vehicle goes straight with constant speed is same as delta r l is same delta r r so the free body diagram easily says that this weight is shared equally by both and that would be uh, again obtained by the deflection times the vertical stiffness of the tire that's simple uh, understanding <clears throat> so now 
Now the condition is when the vehicle takes a right turn and it is going with some speed and there would be an associated uh, lateral acceleration uh, for dynamic equilibrium as there are forces developed at the contact patch in the lateral direction that we know. So let us look at uh, that scenario and the respective diagram parallelly. So let me have the same level road once again. And now what will happen and uh, this is for turning. To right side. So turning to right side, so the low transfer would be from right side to left side. So what would happen? This tire deflection here, which is delta R L, would be increasing now, and delta R R would be decreasing, right? So you see that uh, uh, that would be happen that because of that. What will happen? This axle is going to have a rotation. This axis is going to have a rotation. So when this delta R is equal to delta R is equal to delta R R. The axle uh, is uh, perfect horizontal and there is no rotation. But uh, during cornering, due to this lateral load transfer, the tire deflection on uh, outer side is greater than that of an inner side. That is uh, going to make your uh, axle to uh, roll. So the roll of unsprung mass due to deflection of the tire would be now witnessed in this way. So I will have this now, this side tire, and my axle would have slightly tilted. I have exaggerated this diagram, and I would have this side. Uh, the deflection is reduced, but it's still in contact, right? That's what is here to see. And uh, and this is what is the role of unsprung mass given by phi one angle. So now what will happen to my uh, vertical? Uh, this is vertical. So with respect to this vertical, I would have now. So let me draw that vertical line. This vertical. Now I would have. This is rotated by. Phi 1. So this is rotated by phi 1. This is angle phi 1. That is the rotation of an unsprung mass. <clears throat> and now my vehicle uh, here that is all rotating about which point it is all rotating about uh, roll center. Now unsprung mass is going to be rotating. So unsprung mass is going to be rotating. So this sprung mass is rotated now like this. Sprung mass is rotated now like this. So the CG which is originally was there on this line is now has taken further uh, from here somewhere here. So this is your CG location. So the CG location had come there. Then you see there will be a weight component of course here, WG, and uh, you would have additionally a DL but force or centrifugal force that is M into a y m a y <coughs> lateral force and uh, you see here again uh, this uh, distance so this is again uh, what is that it's rotation of sprung mass about roll center so from here i have this rotation further so this rotation from here further is what is roll of sprung mass and that is phi one that is phi phi two that is phi two so here I have defined two role. So one is phi one, that is the role of unsprung mass due to tire deflection. Due to tire deflection. Another one is phi two is the role of sprung mass, that is body mass. About the roll center, about about roll center or roll axis, roll axis, right? So that's how it has come. So now this is interesting. Now uh, there is some change in geometry, but you see this is very much inside this axle. So this roll can take place. So that this now was going to be migrating on the side. This weight is going to be. Uh, so this is W is mg. This is mg. On WG M times G. Pardon. That 
this. And right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So now, what is that? Uh, I have, of course, here uh, my uh, this f z l that's increased, and uh, f z r that's decreased. It's not disappeared; it's decreased. So it would disappear the moment uh, this uh, m g would be in line with this, and that is the point or uh, the verge of uh, rollover uh, point. And that would happen at the uh, threshold value of lateral acceleration or critical value of lateral acceleration. That's what we are going to understand um, by uh, going to have some um, um, moment balance equation looking at it. That we are going to do it, right? So this is now the free body diagram. And in addition to this, you'd also have your lateral force because that is taking right turn. Your center of rotation is at the right side and you require to generate your Fy uh, L and Fy R at the contact patch in this side. So this would be different uh, done. So this is what does uh, your um, free body. I have not shown here explicitly the spring uh, uh, and all, right? Uh, that's there, I, I have not shown. So that is rolling about this. The spring is what is there here that is the counting your uh, uh, roll stiffness uh, times this uh, phi angle is what is uh, all that we have already seen uh, uh, when we have looked at the role of suspension in vehicle roll. But uh, today's this diagram I just have drawn in order to understand rollover stability problem. So let me just draw a detail uh, um, diagram here, the geometrical aspect here, so that you would be using that to take uh, your. Uh, moment equation, moment balance equation. So I have here, this is H1, this is H1. And from here, the height is H2. And this total height is H, right? So you know, now this is roll center and this is CG location. And this height it is, when it is the first case. So now what has happened now, uh, there are two roll uh, uh, motion. So how do I represent that? One is uh, first uh, by uh, the axle roll. So that axle roll, if I take from here, I'm taking. So that is angle phi one. And from here, uh, it's further roll by phi two. So from here, this angle is phi two. And uh, this point has come to this. So this is your uh, CT location now. So now I require these distances to develop my equation. So I require this distance and this distance and this distance. Right, so how do I write these distances? Uh, I know now this distance uh, here would be H1 cos phi. So this is H1 cos phi 1 because this angle is this. So if I project this, it is going to be H1 cos phi. And this distance from here to here is uh, this is H2, and I would have here H2 cos H2 cos two angle that's phi one to the vertical. If I look at and this phi one also is the phi one plus phi two, phi one plus phi two, and then uh, uh, this distance here uh, would be. So if I extend this line, so this is geometry is a bit, you know, critically you have to look at. If I extend this line, if I extend this line with the phi one angle, I would have uh, for this this distance, this distance from here to here would be H1 plus H2 into sine phi one. H1 plus H2 into sine phi one. And then this distance here to get First, I should uh, draw this line because this is a right angle triangle, and this distance is what is from here to here, H2. So this distance is uh, H2 uh, sine phi 2, and that I should project it again here. So this distance from here to here, this distance, this distance would be H2 sine phi 2, H2 sine phi 2 cos. 
that's all. So this distances are important as I have to take moment about this point uh, uh, O, which is the point projected on the ground. Right, so this point. OK, so now uh, we have defined uh, two roll angle. So that is phi 1 and phi 2. And let's now take moment about point O. Let's now take a moment about point O. Sigma M O. And consider clockwise positive as the coordinate system we follow is uh, SI coordinate system. So clockwise moment positive I consider. And uh, when I take about this point, uh, looking at this free body diagram, I have now this equation. F is at L minus F is at R. F is at L into T by 2, that's clockwise, and F is at R into T by 2, that's counterclockwise, into T by 2. And minus, look at this, uh, MAY into this total height. So MAY is now here. This is my uh, MAY, and this is my weight. So MAY into this height. So that is MAY into H1, H1 cos phi 1 plus H2 cos phi 1 plus phi 2. Then uh, Mg. So I have taken uh, these two forces and about point O when I take FIL and FIR will not participate. These two are already come here and the moment due to this is there and moment due to weight now. So that would be mg that is also again uh, what moment a uh, counterclockwise moment so that is minus mg into uh, this distance so that distance is h2 sin phi to h2 sin phi 2 cos phi 2 that's this distance plus h1 plus h2 h1 plus h2 sin phi 1, sin phi 1 is all equal to 0. So this is your moment balance, simple equation, equation number 1. So I hope you are following, you do not have any doubt. So now, if phi 1 and phi 2 are very small angle, if, see this diagram is drawn exaggerated as if it is appearing in 30 degrees or 45 degrees and so on, but it is exaggerated diagram, you will not have such a kind of role. If we consider if phi 1 and phi 2 or small angle. There is no rollover uh, problem, but we will consider this. If that is a small angle, then what will happen? You will have, you know, that cos phi angle is 1 and sin phi angle is phi itself. So this equation 1 would change now, simplify now because of that assumption. Uh, during stable state of motion only, I am uh, doing that now at the moment. So that's going to be what the equation one would become because of that is f is at l minus f is at r into t by 2. And I bring these two equations on the other side, it's going to be m a y into, so cos phi 1 is 1, so it's h1 plus this is going to be again h2. plus this term mg into, so sine phi 2 is phi 2, this cos phi 2 is 1, so it is h2. And here uh, I have h1 phi 1, h2 phi. So I would have h1 plus h2 here into phi 2 plus h2 phi 2, right? So h2 phi 2. So in this h2 phi 2 is there separate and then this is going to be h1 h2 into uh, phi 1. Sorry, this is phi 1. This is phi 1. And this is my equation 2. So in this, if you look at the contribution that comes from this part is negligible at the moment because there is a smaller uh, load transfer. Uh, the contact of the tire on both sides is there. 
So you just look at the role only. At that time, the contribution of this uh, for this uh, change in the uh, normal load, uh, if you have to find out, and that is very less. So you can uh, consider that. So the contribution from this term is very small, considering. Okay. Contribution. Contribution from this term is very small. What you can do now, you would only look at these two terms and you would have your equation now. F is at L minus F is at R into T by 2 equals M A Y into H1 plus H2. So let's call this equation 3. And now during roll, the value of Ay reaches its critical value. Then there is an impending state of rollover. Correct? So if I have my vehicle, uh, I'm doing a turn with uh, some high speeds, then uh, the lateral uh, acceleration uh, required uh, uh, to maintain my direction, uh, you know, the centripetal acceleration also would be increasing. Uh, as uh, uh, why is it increasing? Because accordingly, the tire develops the lateral force at the contact path. So that lateral force shifting to the CG location, all we have looked at already in our free body diagram in previous lecture. And um, in today's class, we just to revisit that free body diagram, and uh, we are going to look at uh, the condition for uh, wedge of uh, impending state of rollover uh, at impending state of roll over so when it has to roll over when you have your weight and f is at l is in line at that time f is at r is going to be zero that means the reaction f is at r is going to be zero the normal reaction at the right hand side where that is the turning side that's zero is what is going to be an impending state of roll over and uh, hence what will happen your f is at l is going to be mg at that time the vertical balance so the normal at the outer side of the wheel would be straight away equal to mg so uh, these two become uncollinear they become collinear they become collinear <laughs> So now uh, the equation 3 would become, if that is so, at that uh, impending state, the equation 3, I can rewrite it as since this is going to be uh, 0, so equation 3 would become uh, f is at L t by 2 equals m a y into h1, h1 plus h2. So now what is my a y? So a y would be... Uh, uh, Ay. So this f is at l, I will replace it by mg. So I will have this m, m goes off. So Ay by g, normalized by g, would be t by 2 into h1 plus h2. And uh, that's t by 2h. So this is what I was just telling at the beginning. Uh, the threshold value of or the limiting value of uh, lateral acceleration uh, which is representing the in, uh, impending state of rollover is just depends upon your geometry. So the track width and the CG height, right? So you can't just, if this is that you do it, where is that uh, we have to uh, look at? We, you, you have to look at some design aspects. So I can't uh, make my vehicle you know, track uh, with higher and then height lesser. No, if I work on that, uh, there are many other ratios. So if I make my axle length more, uh, maybe that would uh, increase this threshold value, but that may not be a viable solution, right? Uh, then accordingly, your vehicle become much bigger and so on. So if you have to look at so critically, the term what you have neglected here, uh, this term has to be brought in, that has to be accounted, and the effect of uh, phi 1 and phi 2, the role of both unsprung mass and sprung mass to be, looked at critically right of course this is what is the thumb rule or this is that uh, what is an industrial practice so this term is uh, used in industrial reference so 
So at first side itself, when you look at, you would be able to say, uh, talk on this stability. So what would happen in that way, there would be a value corresponding to this. And if I plot that value here, Ay by G, I would have some value here. So I have my P and H for the vehicle. So this is value uh, for the given vehicle. But in reality, if you look at your suspension design, the stiffness of your spring and tire stiffness, they also do play a role. So you see that uh, uh, if I look at uh, my roll stiffness, normalized value, let me just look at what is this K5. Uh, K5 is not only half into Ks into S square or T square in this case. Star I have put, so it's normalized. Let us look at what is K5 star. So if you look at that, uh, the variation of this uh, roll stiffness normalized to one uh, because Ay by G also is normalized. It's a number. So this number, if you look at, this won't reach as it is like that. So it will have some way it is going and then it will asymptotically reaching here. So if this value is something deciding here itself, your uh, threshold limit, the, the vehicle uh, thumb rule is failing here. So you have to optimize your suspension design in order to map or take this plot uh, going to this threshold value, which would be making. At that time only, the contribution from here is very small that you can say. Then only you can say 5.1 and 5.2 are very less. So indirectly what the stiffness is do play uh, an important role. So the roll stiffness the value should be increased. So the roll stiffness value is increased for the uh, sprung mass. Uh, then uh, I would be able to uh, uh, say uh, this second term contributing is less and so on. So such kind of engineering analysis to do. Let us look at now this equation to accounting this term as well and then proceed further. Right. So this is an industrial thumb rule uh, to talk immediately on it. <clears throat> also, if you look at to prevent this rollover stability uh, or ensure uh, uh, or ensure the rollover stability, you see, wherever there is a curve and a highway, you have banking of road. So banking of road would be how it is given. If I have to take a right turn, the slope would be towards right on the road. And the banking angle would be something same as that of this angle phi 1 plus phi 2. So what will happen? Um, uh, you would uh, see that uh, the load transfer, lateral load transfer makes your uh, uh, axle to tilt, but uh, uh, because of this banging already there, you would see that an inner side contact essentially the load shifting would be uh, arrested. You know, the lateral load shifting would be arrested. So that would prevent that uh, uh, adjust to this. So, what I mean by that is this diagram, if you look at this, is flat road. This is flat road. If instead of this is flat road, if this is at an angle, bang, uh, angle of banking, it's called. Then what will happen? This is horizontal. So as long as this axle is horizontal, that doesn't matter during cornering. That won't uh, create your uh, migration of this mg is going to be just above this, or there is no precipitation of your uh, rollover uh, uh, point. So that is why the banking of road that comes. That's simple physics that we already know, and we can connect that to this. Now, uh, so far what we have discussed, and let us continue quickly derive some uh, uh, additional equations, looking at uh, equation 2. And uh, uh, get the expression uh, for uh, deciding uh, the value of K5 for your vehicle, so that you would have uh, your um, uh, critical value matching to this T by 2H. Right? That's what we have to do now. So now my equation one was going to be uh, what uh, because of that my equation one is now uh, I'm going to rewrite. So this see uh, instead of, before that let us just look at. So what does this value of t by two h the t by two h value if you look at for tracks for tracks it is uh, 0 0.182.3 see look at this so, so less right and for uh, cars it would be uh, almost 0 0.8 and for uh, uh, suvs it would be 0.7 something so these are all some of the values of this lateral acceleration during cornering which would be from this dimension t by 2h so car is 0 0.8 is why because I have my CG height is very less, less compared to that of a truck. For a truck, the CG location is very much above. 
so uh, you would have only this value for uh, uh, ay by g for the track that's why at even at lower speed the track would be uh, rolling over which should not take place with your passenger car or in a suv so suv height is uh, compared to the of uh, passenger car sedan class or hatchback is more and in such case uh, you see uh, this value comes down so these are some industrial um, uh, reference and the values that we could readily have it for the uh, vehicle that you are looking at and uh, now uh, continuing uh, with this uh, with my equation two i am going to take equation two and that equation two is going to become now uh, mg because it is at the point of uh, impending state of rollover when i consider it is only fzl into t by 2 so fzl is mg so into t by 2 and that's going to be this is at ro at the uh, at the impending state right at impending to tip or the rollover this is going to be mg into ay by g so you can see may i just to change as mg and divide by g into h1 plus h2 and uh, plus uh, i would have uh, mg the second term that's there that's going to be h1 plus h2 into 51 plus h2 5 that's my equation 5 so what is my equation 4 this is equation 4 This is my equation four, and this is equation five. Uh, this is at the verge of uh, tipping or rolling over. Uh, I my second equation become equation number two become like this. In this, I can have this mg is common in all the terms. I remove it. I I'm just going to derive the expression of a by uh, lateral acceleration, a y by g. So I just do this manipulation. T by two that's equal to a y by g into h1 plus h2 plus Uh, here it is uh, h1 plus h2 into 51 plus h2 h2 52 and uh, h1 plus h2 is there common in two terms uh, so let me just take that out and bring it down here so this is going to be t by 2 into h1 plus h2 and that's equal to a y by g plus so this term is 51 and that angle i'll call simply not by 51 with the threshold value 51 threshold plus when i take h1 plus h2 out here this is h2 by h1 plus h2 h2 by h1 plus h2 into 52 and this angle again is the threshold value So the so overscript, superscript T, I put it to say that is at impending and the threshold value of this. The slight increase in this is not going to ensure. So that uh, that is a limiting value of your phi one and phi two. <coughs> so I require this term a y by a y a y by g is what I need here. So T by two into h one plus h two is what T by two h that we have seen, right? T by 2 into h1 plus h2 as it is i'll take minus 51 threshold minus h2 by h1 plus h2 into 52 threshold so let's call this equation number 6 so this is where i just define now uh, go back to again the tire deflection is delta r and uh, cr is radial stiffness of the tire And K phi is roll stiffness of the body. Uh, if that is all defined, I would have my uh, condition uh, equation C R, that is uh, stiffness of the tire into delta R, is going to be delta F Z. That's my equation seven. And uh, at tipping, at tipping, at tipping, delta R into R. 
is going to be zero. Inside this is the tire dynamic deflection zero. That is the point where the tire get lifted from the ground. So there is no deflection at the right side. And uh, what would happen uh, to delta R on the other side, left side, that become two times delta R, right? So if that is so, phi one T would be two times delta R by T. And two times delta R is nothing but delta R now on the left side. Delta R on the left side by T. And uh, uh, so delta R uh, this and that's going to be, uh, how do I uh, relate to delta FZ? So delta FZ is going to be fz l minus fz r so this is zero at uh, the tipping stage so that's going to be mg so delta fz is mg so delta fz is uh, given by uh, delta r l into cr so now this would help me uh, to put delta r is uh, now mg by cr mg by cr into 1 by t <coughs> so this is my equation 8 so the equation 8 is uh, what is the threshold uh, role of my axle due to tire deflection that is phi 1 t equals mg the weight of the vehicle by radial stiffness of the tire into 1 by t <coughs> let me call this is equation number 8 and similarly, I have to get now threshold value of phi 2. So if I have phi 1 and phi 2, I will substitute in this equation 6 and that would uh, help me to get my final expression. So for that, considering the body roll now, considering. I will finish in 5 minutes. Uh, if we have to go for the next lecture, please move on. Later on, you can watch. Considering the body roll, uh, K phi into phi 2 is what is going to be m a y into h2 cos uh, phi 1 i just write down you can verify with the diagram phi 2 plus m g h2 sine phi 1 plus phi 2 this is now uh, the equation uh, uh, balance about roll center or about roll axis when you take this equation, I'll get moment balance. <coughs> Where in this K phi is the body roll stiffness. And these angles are a small angle consideration. Would uh, consider this K phi into phi 2 as M A Y is going to be simply H2 plus uh, M G H2 into phi 1 plus phi 2. So let me take now, uh, uh, there's phi 2 here. So I'll take, uh, there's a phi 2 term on one side and that's going to be K phi minus Mg H2 into phi 2. And in this side, I'll have M, uh, Mg by Ay by G H2 plus this is mg h2 into phi 1 mg h2 into phi 1 uh, further this equation i can uh, uh, use it so i i require what phi 2 so at tipping uh, phi 2 threshold value would be and this term would be brought down and uh, my ay by g is threshold value so with the superscript this and uh, here I'll have mg h2 divided by this term k phi minus mg h2. And uh, here this term plus mg h2 by k phi minus mg h2 uh, into phi 1. Phi 1 for short. So this is equation number 9. So in this equation, let me substitute phi 1 t. So phi 1 t is what does equation 8. So put 8 
in one, uh, eight in nine. So I'll have my equation now again changed to phi two t equals a y by g over t m g h two by k phi minus k phi minus m g h two plus m g h two by k phi minus m g h two into phi one t is what we had as uh, m g by c r t. So I will write that here m g by c c r into t. So this is uh, uh, now equation number ten. So here uh, I'm just going to introduce some terms so so that I would express them in a non-linear way. Uh, there is no unit for the terms. So normalizing. So for that, what I'm doing, I'm just going to do my stiffness CR star I'm defining. Radial stiffness normalized by this. So I will take this mg down. So it is CR by um, this way. So this is uh, I, I'm going to define this as. C R T by M G. So C R T is that this M G when I bring down the same term to have whatever that I have in denominator, I'm going to have it as C R star. So the C R star is what normalized. So unit of C R is what uh, uh, Newton per meter. So now uh, uh, that is been multiplied by meter by Newton weight here. So it is the number now. I'm just bringing this as a number, normalizing it, and uh, this is how I define. And uh, similarly, the roll stiffness K phi, I'm going to normalize it uh, uh, for a unitless quantity. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to divide this by mg by h2. So K phi, that's K phi by mg h2. So if I divide K phi roll stiffness by the load times h2. Where H2 is uh, the CG location from roll center. I get my roll stiffness normalized. So this if I introduce in equation 10. So the equation 10 would become phi 2. Uh, so equation, uh, uh, not equation 10. I, I have now equation 10 giving me uh, phi 2 threshold. Equation 8 gives me um, Phi one threshold. Substitute that in equation number six. Right. So what I have to do now is substitute. Substitute uh, eight, eight and ten in six. Equation number. Uh, what is equation six? A y by g. Threshold value is T by 2 into H1 plus H2 minus phi 1 T minus H2 by H1 plus H2 into phi 2 T. So phi 1 T and phi 2 T are given by 8 and 10. Substituting in this equation 6, I would have my final equation. I'll just write down, introducing this uh, all, I'll get this. You please complete that uh, uh, two steps. And witness this expression a y by g threshold value would be given by t by 2 by not only h1 plus h2. Now, addition to that, I'll have h1 plus h2, a term from here h2 by k phi star. So, the k phi star is bringing the design aspect of your suspension minus 1. So, if k phi is k phi star value is 1. So this term is going to be infinity. So it's too much, right? So leave that. So put k phi star as two, then it's one. So you have to get along with this adding this three, four like that. If you do, uh, you would see that uh, the plot, whatever I have drawn, I can be witness it. It will go to this asymptotic value. So where this is uh, given a y by g, for k phi star maybe right so this is fixed that's given by t by 2 h but in reality the value is dictated by your k phi star and that could be 
uh, done. So this equation is essential for that. So this term, additionally, you also have the term that is accounting your role of unspent mass. So, yeah, star. so this is that expression. So you are given a vehicle with these data and you would be able to ask or you can find out the design aspect of suspension and that is indirectly going to decide your uh, roll stiffness of your vehicle. So this equation is number 11 and that gives you the condition of uh, lateral acceleration through an engineering approach, engineering analysis approach detail uh, to prevent the rollover of your vehicle and that is in the rollover stability analysis of a vehicle and in um, particular you know, in, a, in a broader spectrum uh, we have finished our lateral dynamics so we will start our vehicle uh, dynamics particular part longitudinal dynamics in the next class with that note i'll stop today's class if you have any doubts you can ask otherwise i'll stop recording and download your attendance